My name is Jens Richter. I'm CEO of Fremantle for the international business. Um, so we help to finance and sell shows around the world. It hit us quite quick, right? So um, when I, this is now, we're entering month five um, of the remote working. And um, I think, first of all, it takes a little bit longer than we thought. When we went into this, um, we didn't expect it to be this long lasting and this impactful. On the other hand, I must say it was an amazing, um, surprising, almost energizing process. You know, it's like not only us, all the companies we work with, everybody pulled their work into home offices, into remote. Um, we had a lot of shows in production, beginning of the year in post-production. Um, and it was critical to see, um, do we get those shows post-produced? You know, like, and, and how do the producers pull that off? with, I don't know, um, actors doing the ADR, the narration, uh, whether it's special effects, um, whatever it was. And to my big surprise, everybody pulled it off. So let's say, for instance, the shows that were presented at the London screenings, the majority of them were still at pr in production that time. All these shows are delivering now. Um, so that's kudos to the amazing producers and amazing creativity they put to work in making it happen. Um, and so on one hand, it's an impact. It's, it's not an easy route for any of us. On the other hand, um, very surprised. So we had a couple of big um, factuals and, um, and, and high-end drama. It, they were shot, um, but not post-produced. Like, we are who we are, Luca Guadagnino, um, for HBO and, and Sky in Italy, so HBO US. Um, that show was, um, it was shot, um, but... Um, the editing, the music, the whole post, everything still needed to be done. Um, so the impact was slight delay, but everybody pulled it off and the show will launch um, on HBO um, in September. So like three days ago, you might have seen um, a teaser was put out. Um, we are now in a journey since two years with a show called Enslaved telling the history of slavery, 400 years of slavery, with um, Sam Jackson being the face and the executive producer of the show. Um, and that's for Epics in the US and CBC in Canada, produced by Simka, Jokubovici, and, and Afua Hirsch, who you know, certainly know, is also face of the show. And um, that show was shot over, you know, like more than a year. We were in post-production. Um, some of the reenactments, we were two days short of reenactments, uh, shot in the UK. They were done um, two weeks ago. Um, and we're in editing. So overall, the impact was the show is delayed by a couple of months, but it got finalized. Um, then we have a couple of shows in production where we probably need to change the format in terms of really reducing the hours. You know, it's like, and to get them over the line. So there, there clearly there has been quite an impact on production. At the same time, um, people again got extremely creative in pulling it off. So in terms of the future and what we might be doing different as a business going forward, um, I think we, we learned incredibly much about how we can trust our people, how we can all rem work in a lot more flexible environment and make it happen. Um, I think work going back after COVID, work after COVID will not be the same anymore as before. I, I totally believe that. Um, at the same time, the physical office is far from dead. You know, it's like people need people in conducting business, especially in a creative business when, you know, you have, uh, you want to talk about the creative process and also when you talk about with your clients, you know, there is a difference. And we see it now already in the first market that are the first markets that are kind of opening up in terms of work life is a little bit more flexible now. Um, we have um, teams on the ground in many countries around the world and works more flexible now. Um, our people, our sales uh, managers now go out and, and meet clients already again, you know, or we meet with producers again. Um, so I think that will be different. Um, I think in terms of production technology, we learn an awful lot, you know, like how to be smart, more flexible, new technologies. Um, we, we are all forced in, in, in doing it with a little bit more maybe nimble 
approach, you know, smaller teams um, and, and how, what can we learn from that going forward? The other thing really interesting is um, quick turnaround, you know, like when you think about news, you know, it's like, and COVID and, um, and you look at local broadcasters, especially local platforms, how they followed um, all the new, um, the daily progress of what's happening. Um, and um, so the turnaround of stories is much faster. And I think we can also learn from that. As an example, for instance, in the German market, um, it was today, UFA announced um, our, so Fremantle Germany works under the label UFA. And um, there has been a huge scandal in the German market uh, on a company called Wirecard. So when you look into Financial Times, they were the ones who, who wrote about that finance scandal the first already like three years ago. So it was a house of cards, a big top stock listed German company, finance service company, financial service company. It was all a house of cards and it collapsed. And uh, now as an example, Ufa said, okay, we want to do a movie from this, you know, and, um, and we do it now and we're going to deliver this baby by beginning of the year. So it's like, even, I think it even translates to drama, you know, that, the learnings and, and the awareness of the true stories now have to hit the market much faster because not only because we, we learned it and we can do it, it's also because our consumers, our audiences, they want a faster turnaround. We're in the midst of a big financial crisis, right? The biggest financial crisis in a long time. And in, turn, in terms of financial crisis, um, there's, there always has been a trend to escapism. You know, the blue sky um, that takes my mind, relieves my mind. You know, I can, you know, like uh, it's the end of the day and I can just escape, literally escape. Um, and not think too much, you know, it's like, and, and when you talk to broadcasters or also, you know, like the big platforms, um, I spoke to one of the big platforms last night and they said, uh, well, romantic comedies. And I was like, really? You know, the ro romantic comedy movies or comedies in general, you know, or genre like horror, you know, it's like, um, so shows where you literally can escape to. Um, the other thing is um, romantic comedy or comedy or horror, you might be able to shoot them in uh, remote locations. You know, it's like, uh, it's, it's not like the big drama that travels five territories around the world. So they are also friendly uh, to be shot if potentially in, with small teams in remote locations. So broadcasters and platforms, all of us also have to think in, in those kind of terms. What can we pull off now that we can deliver six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 months from now? So we have to think about location, team size, and all that as well. So you have, I think on, on one hand, you have this um, escapism. The other thing is nostalgia. You know, so if you have a big catalog of highly beloved um, 1970s, 1980s crime shows, characters, crime or, or comedies, you know, you, you can pull them out now. And we've seen quite some broadcasters who did that. Predominantly local broadcasters or local platforms put those nostalgia shows out for their very local audience because they have that more local access versus global platforms. And then on the on the other thing side of this is what you briefly mentioned with um, fake news, um, uh, populism, um, and conspiracy theories. You know, it's like um, is Bill Gates behind COVID? I mean, it's like I, I read an article the other day. Twenty-eight percent of Americans seem to believe that, um, and and that's pretty mind blowing, right? Those numbers. Um, and um, so I think, um, while on one hand you have this appetite for pure entertainment that we love to satisfy, we love pure entertainment, we love to entertain people. That's what we're all here for. On the other hand, it's also, you know, to inform people. There's a real huge hunger in information. So when you look at, especially the first two months of um, lockdown in most territories around the world, in most countries around the world, when you look at media consumption, you know, there was like a complete spike, um, especially with local broadcasters, because they were the ones who could serve the local news best in their market and fastest. 
and the spike with news or any kind of reportage about what's going on, COVID related, and the consumption was mind blowing, you know, in all territories around the world. So there is this appetite. And then, and then when coming back to the point of economical crisis, we are in the midst of an economic crisis. So there's people are afraid, many people lose their jobs, right? Or, you know, really have to worry about how to make a living tomorrow. Um, and that has an impact. So again, they want to be informed. They want to know what's going on. Um, and, um, and I don't think it's a coincidence that Black Lives Matter spiked during COVID times, you know, because you're already in America, in the American market, you had a loss of millions and millions of jobs. So it's like, it's tough, right? And in, in certain communities, it's, it's even tougher. And, um, and then there is no big surprise that people go to the street, right? And, and, and big themes come up. And I think it's our, our obligation, it's our job um, as producers, as creatives to bring those stories to life and, and help the conversation. You know, when you look at, and at, from what we do at Fremantle, you know, it's like, we're, we're not doing it now. We're doing it, we try to do it all the time, constantly. So when you look at the shows that we launch, you know, during this year, on one hand, you have American Idol and America's Got Talent and game shows. We love to entertain you. On the other hand, you have shows like uh, La Jauria launched in, in Latin America and Spain with Amazon to crazy success, you know, and that is about uh, violence against women, you know, or, or the show I mentioned earlier, um, Enslaved, the, the History of Slavery with Sam Jackson, Afua Hirsch. That show is in the making since two and a half years. We are on board since two years. You know, it has nothing to do with demonstrations that went on a couple of weeks or a month ago. So it's like, it's, 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 it's on our mind. And, and um, or, you know, like Luca Guadagnino shows, you know, we are who we are. That is, that's, those are kids. It's youth, it's about gender, it's about sexuality, it's about color, um, diversity. Um, and we believe those shows will spark a conversation. And uh, for instance, for We Are Who We Are, HBO, three days ago, launched the reel, like that trailer, a teaser. And when we looked at the response in social media, and it was predominantly young, and it was predominantly positive, and it was huge. So there is an audience out there that reacts, you know, if you keep the conversation going. And that's, that's a big part of what we do, and that's a big part of what we all should do. Diversity coming to the forefront and how can we how can we push the mission a little bit further, right? How can we be part of it? Um, I think it's it's multiple approaches. One is um, simply get involved in shows that tackle diversity and, and diversity for you know diversity is it's a huge topic, right? It, it's it's currently it's very much Black Lives Matters in in some other territories, it might be immigration, it might be, you know, it's like, it's a very colorful topic. Um, and what we do is with all our producers around the world is to think about what's the diversity topic, what are the diversity topics in Germany, in the UK, in France, you know, how can we pick them up and how, how can we help telling those stories? Um, I love the fact that there is more openness now with uh, the commissioners and that's across platforms and broadcasters. You know, it's like when, when we, when we embarked um, our enslaved, the history of slavery two years ago, you know, that's, it's a big undertaking. The budget is north of $2 million an episode, you know, Sam Jackson travels the world and we go after this topic of, you know, like 15 million of Africans about got shipped and 10% went down. And we, in each episode, we dive down to the boats and to sunken ships and tell their stories. Um, so when we started with it, it was like, sometimes, you know, we got a response like, do we need to tell this story by broadcasters? Literally, you know, now two years in and the show is ready to deliver um, in September, we, we meet a completely different market. Right. So now it is the story to tell. Right. Um, so it needs both. It needs it needs the interest of creating the stories as well. It needs the interest of showing those stories, um, because in most markets um, there is, uh, you know, most broad, many broadcasts and platform 
they took it the safe route. The safe route meaning don't tackle controversial topics too much, right? Stay mainstream. That's the safe route. The market has changed. People are interested in these stories. And then as producers, it's about um, opening to young talent. You know, it's like, and, and so it's from opening to young talent, opening to the workforce to, to young talent. And that could be across all um, departments within our company, for instance. It can be from finance to creation to production, right? Um, and um, at the same time, um, also risking sometimes uh, the investment, right? You, you have to be part of it. So you have to put some money in it to tell these stories like Enslave, to make them happen. And then being part of it to, in a certain way also to create the market. So it, it's both, it's supply and demand. You know, some people have to start the supply side as well. Um, now, over the last two, three, four, five weeks, you know, there's so many platforms who clearly put a mark out there and saying, we want to invest in these stories that the market will change. And I think that effect will be long lasting. How will the way we deliver our shows to audiences change, right? And how will audiences um, consume our shows in the future? I mean, clearly, um, clearly the, the COVID crisis with having people locked down at home, consuming more shows, um, clearly drove a lot of non-linear viewing. And we see that with the numbers, right? So it's like um, at the beginning, we saw a number spike with linear broadcasters, and that was very much triggered by news and, uh, and coverage of, of actual very current daily COVID messaging. Um, and then uh, parallel to it and overtaking that, we saw a spike in uh, a clear rise in non-linear consumption. Um, so we see an acceleration in the market. How, how long lasting and how impactful that acceleration will be is also, I, I believe, a little bit of a question of how long COVID will last. You know, we are all a little bit, we are all a little bit, um, we love our behavior. We are victims to our behavior. You know, you see that the pubs open, people go to the pubs or the restaurants or to the beach while well, they shouldn't, right? So it's, I don't know, people go back to what they used to do. Um, in general, um, but clearly there is an evolution in the market. Um, on one hand, you have the state broadcasters, the BBCs, the ARDs, the France Televisions of this world, the PBSs of this world. I think they play a huge role in this current market, not only because they inform you about COVID, they inform you about all these social issues more probably than any other outlet. And that's their public function. And that's where they're and, and they, I think they do a terrific job. In, in most territories around the world, they do a terrific job. It's, and in Europe, we have a very strong history for these public state broadcasters. Um, the other thing is all these public state broadcasters now were also very smart in launching their nonlinear offerings. So when you have your content on or your show on the BBC or France Television, you know, like they launch their nonlinear, you know, and then whether at the end of the day it's called Britbox or... Salto, you know, it's like, um, or Mediatek, you know, it's, it's all out there. And interesting enough, when you look into the local territories and you look at the consumption numbers, you see that their audiences now find the offering nonlinear as well. So they, the uptick, uh, the uptake on, on, on nonlinear, like BBC iPlayer, when you look at the nonlinear numbers, they're, they're pretty impressive these days, very impressive. And uh, when you look at those numbers in, 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 in Scandinavia, for instance, when you look at NRK's nonlinear numbers, for some shows, they're absolutely mind-blowing. The majority of the viewing happens nonlinear. Non um, so th that's the state broadcasters. And then you have commercial broadcasters, and, and they're going through the same transition. In, in most territories, in most countries, you have your commercial broadcasters, and they, they all launch their nonlinear offering over the last five to two years. They all put a lot of money in there. Um, they all now commission quite a lot of programming for those platforms. And when you look at Germany at RTL, they launched TV now. Um, the majority of the dramas today commissioned by RTL will launch on their nonlinear service. So they really want to drive that. It's not so much for the linear anymore. 
Um, and you see that in other markets, you know, any any show that gets commissioned in Scandinavia in almost all territories will will be very much commissioned with a very strong view on on nonlinear consumption. The advantage of both the public broadcasters and the commercial broadcasters is they know their markets inside out. They have the big brands, they have the talent, um, they have the very fast turnaround. Um, they can also play nice ball with with other media outlets. So you know they can play ball with the with the with the yellow press with the big newspapers. They they know it inside out, and that's a big advantage they they all have. Um, there will be the market to an extent will be cleared out a little bit. You know, like when you have lots of competing commercial broadcasters in some markets, there might be a little bit less. Or when you have lots of cable channel brands that are out there. Um, I think they are pushed the hardest, you know, smaller cable channels that mainly live off um, library content, because that kind of library content I can find on the Netflix or Amazon or HBO Max to the, tomorrow as well. So that's, that's probably the most difficult to be in tomorrow. Um, and then at the same time, you have now more than ever choice with, with the global platforms and um, there will be more coming. There will be more coming as well. So I think overall consumption will go up and there will be more of a divide between focusing on local content versus the more global content. And the global platforms will try to get into that local business as well. So how well and to what extent can they do it? Right, that's a big question. I'm a happy realist. You know, I, I tend to see the glass half full but I'm, I tend also to look at the risk. Um, personally, you know, I have three kids. Um, I talk a lot with my three kids during these days. You know, it's like, because on one hand, school is not happening to the extent it happened before. And is this all a big vacation or was, what is this? You know, the other thing is, I think we all know people that got ill um, and some people got really ill and really suffered. So it's, 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 it's a real challenge and it's a real, illness that can hit you out there so and and i think that for me personally it's a kind of a reset in a way you you look at the world you, you stop in you you look at the world you explain it to your family to your kids you know it's like world can be different you know sometimes i remind myself of stories that i heard from my parents or my grandparents and i don't know they told you stories of post-war europe and you know and, you know, I grew up in it during a time when it just went up, 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 right? So, and, and now is a time for, it can be different, right? Um, and just to take that moment and discuss it with the people next to you and what that means. And, um, and life is more, about, more than just a happy life and consumption. And I don't know, what's the next holiday destination? There's a lot more topics in life, as we all know. So I think it makes people think about themselves and where they are in, in, in life, in, it, in their stage of life. Um, I also believe that um, going forward, there's more flexibility in the way we work. And that opens up also the access to, when in our media business, you know, it, it opens the way, also the way we think and we look at topics, right? I think we will tell different stories going forward and, and we look at stories in a different way and we will be more open to take some risk in telling new stories and giving new perspectives on life um, because there's a change in the way we live. So I think it's, it's, it's very clear that we are all a lot more curious now coming out of this and so will be our audiences. Um, so creativity will get a push, I think. Um, in terms of storytelling, in terms of the way we produce, the way where we produce. I mean, when, when you saw, when you're just looking at how a lot of shows got produced over the last couple of months, you know, starting with, I don't know, game shows without audiences or talent shows without audiences. And, you know, producers on Monday had no idea how they would get their show on air on Thursday, you know, and they pulled it off. So there is a lot in motion now. And, um, and I think it will stay in motion.
it's just too much of an impact. It's too long lasting what we're living through. It's a real long lasting experience and that will show consequences in the way we work and think and entertain people.